These are the weirdest bands in NBA history. This is disgusting. It was an interesting move. I don't think I've ever seen it. And by far the weirdest one is the NBA banning hair. Back in 2013, Amon Shumper was known for his iconic hairstyles. He was more well known for his flat top than his jump shot. Shumper was sponsored by Adidas at the time, so he didn't see a problem with shaving the Adidas logo on the back of his head. But as soon as the league found out, they laid down the ban hammer, and he had to post a pic on the gram of his haircut before and after, with the caption, banned. According to the NBA rulebook, item 5, section H, it states, the only article bearing a commercial logo which can be worn by players is their shoes. So I guess we won't see a Nike swoosh or Jumpman logo on anyone's head anytime soon. But there are some other hairstyles that should be banned by the NBA. Jimmy Butler has had a few different hairstyles, and it wasn't exactly banned. But the NBA tried everything to hide his new hairstyle. Jimmy decided he wanted to troll the NBA, so he showed up to media day with his crazy new look. He got this new look, so for the rest of the season, all of his media pictures had his crazy hair in it. And that included promos, icons, and anything shown on TV. But the best part is, Jimmy took his hair extensions out right after he got his pictures taken. And that's why the NBA had to get Jimmy back. Because on one graphic for all-star voting, they put Butler's 2K picture on the screen, rather than anything he took on media day. Just so they didn't have to keep showing everyone his long hair. But since we were talking about Adidas, we have to talk about one of their main signature athletes, James Harden. Because back in 2013, Harden signed a 13 year, $200 million deal to be with Adidas. But before that, Harden had been repping Nike all the way back to his time with Arizona State. But a month after he signed this monster deal, he was seen walking out of a movie theater wearing Air Jordan 5s. Adidas called Harden immediately and told him he has to stop wearing other brands out in public, on the court, and even in his own house. But one band that no one saw coming was banning a shoe that made you jump higher. APL stands for Athletic Propulsion Labs, and in 2010, they made a shoe that made whoever wore them jump higher. They claimed you could jump almost 3 inches higher than without the shoes. But before the start of the 2010 NBA season, the APL Concept 1 was hit with the ban hammer by the NBA. They became the first shoe to be banned by the NBA because it had performance enhancing technology. And instead of getting embarrassed about their shoe being banned, APL embraced it. They created two more models that were also banned by the NBA in 2020. They called them the Super Future and the Concept X, and they're proud that they are the only shoes banned by the NBA for making you jump higher. And if we're talking banned shoes, we have to talk about the classic Nike Air ships. Back in October 1984, Jordan stepped onto the court wearing a black and red colorway of the Nike Air ships. He wore them during a preseason game against the New York Knicks, but it was in 1985 when the NBA sent a letter to Nike. The letter said that his red and black Nike basketball shoes violated the NBA's uniform rules. Back then, the league was strict about the colors on their athlete's sneakers, making sure it was the same color as their jerseys. And they didn't like his sneakers sticking out, so they threatened to fine MJ $5,000 every time he wore the shoes. But that's when Nike stepped in and volunteered to pay the fine for their star. The band's sneaker story blew up Nike and helped them market for the shoes, right before launching the band campaign for the Air Jordan 1s. However, the NBA likes banning more than just hair and shoes, because they also ban things that players say and do on the court. In fact, Cam Thomas was fined $40,000 for saying no homo. We already had good looking dudes, no homo, <laughs> but you know how it go. Yeah, that cost him 40 Gs, but 40,000 is nothing compared to the biggest fine in NBA history. The Timberwolves have never been a very good team, and they were willing to do anything to turn it around. So in 2000, the Timberwolves were secretly paying players under the table. Because of the NBA rules, you're only able to pay players on your team a certain amount of money. So to avoid that rule, the Wolves signed players for less money. And when no one was looking, they started dishing out a lot more money to players. So the league would hopefully not find out. Except the NBA did find out and hit the Wolves with the biggest fine in NBA history, three and a half million dollars. Now it sounds like it can't get any worse than that, 
but at least they were fined 35k from doing this in an NBA game. I don't know if this is worth 35k, but Dwight's not the only player getting fined for weird celebrations. Because Jimmy Butler was fined 15k for whatever he's doing right here. Not only that, but the Heat social media team also posted the celebration on Twitter, and they got fined another 15k for that. First Dwight, now Jimmy, what's going on in the NBA? But celebrations aren't the only thing the NBA is worried about, because the NBA banned everyone from wearing glasses. In 2011, Dwayne Wade was having some serious migraines, and he claimed that it was from the bright lights in the NBA stadiums. So to help minimize the blinding lights, he planned to wear tinted glasses for his next game. But the NBA had other plans, and said that the tinted goggles would be banned, because his opponents wouldn't be able to see his eyes. And for his next game, he still wore the goggles, but he had to wear the ones that weren't as tinted as he wanted. He even told a reporter that he doesn't know how he looks in the glasses, because he didn't look in the mirror. Maybe they didn't help his migraines as much as he wanted, but he was still able to make a fashion statement. Speaking of Dwayne Wade, he has a history of getting injured, but one injury completely changed his career. He had an injury so bad, he had to wear a band-aid. In 2009, Wade got a cut under his left eye, and instead of letting it get infected, he slapped a black band-aid on it. That was fine, the NBA had no problem, but the very next game, he showed up wearing a flash band-aid, and that wouldn't be the end of it. The very next game, wearing a USA flag band-aid, and even showing up in his very own Wade band-aid. And D-Wade's band-aids were starting to get popular. Even rapper Lil Wayne showed up to the game wearing one. But this is where Wade took it a little too far, still wearing the band-aids after his cut healed. But this is where the NBA had enough. They were tired of their players wearing band-aids as fashion statements. So they completely banned him and said band-aids can only be worn by NBA players for medical purposes only. They say the NBA stands for National Basketball Association, but I think it stands for no band-aids. However, band-aids aren't the only accessory to be banned by the NBA. Because in the year 2000, Sam Perkins decided to be the first player ever to wear do-rag in a game. It was during the era of baggy shorts, baggy shirts, and big chains. The biggest NBA stars were making this fashion popular, such as Rip Hamilton, Carmelo Anthony, and Allen Iverson. It was during the preseason when Perkins became the first player ever to wear a do-rag in a game. And right after the game, the NBA said the do-rag was a safety hazard and banned it immediately. Now, do-rags weren't the only thing banned from this era of the NBA, because the NBA had a problem with chains. Some of the best players in the NBA started wearing chains, just like Julius Irving. However, it would be his teammate Daryl Dawkins who would ruin it for everyone. He would rock multiple chains with pendants, and he was a high-flying center, so his chains were constantly hitting defenders in the face. After giving defenders too many black eyes, the NBA realized it was a safety hazard, so they immediately banned chains for everyone. Even though just a couple years later, Michael Jordan rocked a gold chain during the 1987 dunk contest. I guess you don't have to follow the rules if you're the GOAT. But one of the weirdest NBA bands has to do with Karan Butler. Because to calm his nerves before games, rather than chewing gum, Butler would chew straws. But the only reason he started chewing straws was because he used to have an addiction to Mountain Dew. He would drink 6 12 ounce bottles of Mountain Dew every day, so the only way to break his addiction and to calm his nerves was to chew straws. However, it gets even crazier than that because he can only chew one straw, and it has to be from McDonald's. And he's chewed so many straws, he knows exactly what the McDonald's straw is like. During a test, he picked out a McDonald's straw out of 15 other straws. And he's able to do this because he has boxes of McDonald's straws at his house, so he can chew them whenever he likes. But once the NBA found out about his habits, they banned him from chewing straws on the bench. The NBA said it was a safety issue and didn't want all their fans watching his dangerous habit. The NBA seems to ban a lot of items players like, but this next ban was one of the worst ones. Players were tired of all the bans going on around the NBA, but it was when the NBA made a rule that every player had to wear the same headband with the NBA logo on it. 
So as a way to stand up to the NBA, players like Rajon Rondo started wearing their headbands upside down. And he would keep wearing it upside down until the NBA banned it completely and threatened to find Rondo every single time he wore it. So instead of giving into the rules, Rondo just completely stopped wearing headbands. However, Rondo's not the only player that's had issues with headbands. Rasheed Wallace also tried not showing the NBA logo by wearing his headband inside out, but this didn't work either because the NBA banned players from doing that too. Now, when it comes to NBA uniforms, nothing is better than the NBA jersey. And one of the most important parts is the number. There are tons of iconic numbers, like Michael Jordan's 23, Kobe Bryant's 8 and 24, and Bill Russell's number 6. But there's one number that no NBA player has ever worn, and that number is 69. There was never a specific reason for this, but I'm sure we can all guess why this isn't allowed. Dennis Rodman was the only player who tried to wear 69, but instead, he was forced to wear the number 70. It's even rumored that Mark Cuban had a bunch of number 69 jerseys printed. But since the NBA didn't let Rodman wear his number 69, Cuban still has the jerseys at his house. And that's not even the only jersey to be banned by the NBA. Because jersey numbers are one thing, but having a jersey we can't even see on TV is another. In 2019, the Milwaukee Bucks introduced their Cream City jerseys. And although that's a weird name for a jersey, that's not the reason the Bucks haven't worn it since 2019. The reason they can't wear the jerseys is the actual cream color. The color interferes with the technology the NBA uses for digital on the court advertisements. On the TV broadcast, there are digitally inserted ads that appear on the floor. And since the color of the jerseys blends in with the court, it makes it so you can't see the advertisements. I just think the NBA doesn't want the Bucks to wear jerseys called Cream City. That might be the weirdest jersey name I've ever heard. But what's even weirder is tattoos NBA players have. Check out the weirdest tattoos in NBA history.